And when you understand what happens when you sleep, you begin to, you begin to have a knowledge on the important times to sleep and why. There's a little tiny gland in the base of the brain and it's called the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is about the size of a, maybe a, a, la, a macadamia nut. And it's right in the base of your brain. And the pineal gland releases four hormones every night, but only in certain hours. Huge problem today is insomnia. Huge problem. Why? Why are people having trouble with sleep? The earlier you go to bed, the more likely you are to fall into a deep sleep. Don't you hate it when you've slept for what feels like an eternity, but still feel tired in your bones with zero motivation to leave the bed? Did you know that it might be because you are not sleeping right? That's right. There are right and wrong ways even for sleep. And Barbara O'Neill has revealed a secret that might just help your sleeping problems. So watch this video till the end so you can learn how to wake up refreshed. Starting with the shocking truth about eight hour sleep cycles. All right, so we know that your body needs sleep to function properly. But before we get into the details of how and when, we need to understand how long we need to sleep. And that's where Barbara O'Neill steps in. According to the naturopath, your body needs at least eight hours of sleep. We need to be sleeping eight hours a night, eight hours. So you've got a choice that can be 8 p.m. to 4 a.m., 9 p.m. to 5 a.m., my favorite, or to stretch 10 to 6. While she was giving a lecture about optimizing sleep, she quoted a British professor who had done extensive research on sleep and how it affects our bodies. According to his findings, people who sleep eight hours a day have better memory and brain functioning than people who sleep six hours a day. Barbara has also been a strong advocate of this concept. She claims that sleeping six hours a day is actually more dangerous than sleeping four hours a day. Sounds pretty odd, right? Well, she explains that if a person has slept four hours, then that person will wake up tired. But if someone sleeps six hours a day, they will wake up just fine. However, that's dangerous because your body hasn't rested enough to recover fully. 10 nights of six hours sleep a night doubles your risk of mental illness. And six hours sleep a night, the person doesn't even know they're not functioning properly because they actually feel all right. What a deception is that? According to her, the brain wouldn't even have time to cleanse itself of the useless information. While quoting Dr. Matthew Walker, she even said that sleep deprivation has caused more road accidents than alcohol. Next up, we need to understand why sleeping from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. is the ultimate sleeping hack. Can we sleep at any part of the day? Or does it have to be a specific time? Barbara has also discussed this, and according to her, the best time to sleep is 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. But to understand it a bit better, we need to understand the difference between REM and NREM sleep. Barbara explains that there are two types of sleep, non-rapid eye movement, NREM sleep, and rapid eye movement, REM sleep. In NREM, your body moves your memory from your hippocampus to the cortex in your brain and cleanses negative emotions as long as you have forgiven. She said about REM sleep, this is where all the dreaming happens. According to her, this phase is important because it is when you do all of the creative thinking. Barbara claims that the nine to five sleeping time is perfectly divided. Before midnight, NREM is at its peak, which means your brain is busy cleaning it up. And as the night progresses, the shift is more toward REM sleep. This basically means that 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. has perfectly balanced timings. So you free up the space in your head, as well as effectively sort out the information that you gathered during the day. Now, this raises an important question. What are the hidden dangers of going to bed after midnight? Most of us have a habit of sleeping in the later part of the night. We usually go to bed after 12, thinking that we'll get more hours out of the day. And while we might think that those three extra hours are for our pleasure, they might be doing more harm than good. I was, what, I was reading one research paper that said that, that regular late nights has a similar effect on the body to alcoholism and drug addiction because it's not allowing the body to revive and recharge every night. There are some things that can stimulate the release of these and there are some things that can inhibit. And we're going to look at Sustain Me and I'm going to show you how the basic principles of Sustain Me, these laws of health, how they can 
influence sleep. As we just discussed, NREM sleep occurs in the earlier part of sleep, and when we decide to sleep late, our brain doesn't get to experience that. This results in our brain not getting enough time to clear out the memories from the previous day. This would ultimately mean that you won't have enough space for new memories either. Plus, this could potentially lead to brain fog as well. And that's not all. Hormonal secretion is cut down by almost half as well. From mood to memory, these hormones are necessary for better mental health. But what hormones are these? Well, Barbara revealed the four powerful hormones released during sleep. So, what are these hormones and how come they're only released in that time? It's to do with the, uh, the circadian rhythm. You've heard of the circadian rhythm? And our circadian rhythm is basically set by uh, light and dark signal exposure in the eyes, the moon, the tides, it all has to do with this. Light and dark signals are fed through the optic nerve to a control centre in the brain where the, where the um, body clock is situated. You see, there's a pineal gland, a tiny organ at the base of the brain that releases four essential hormones for sleep, but only during specific hours of the night. According to Barbara O'Neill, these hormones are released between 9 p.m. and 2 a.m. in winter, and between 10 p.m. and 3 a.m. in summer. She claims that this timing is influenced by circadian rhythms, which are controlled by light and dark signals sent through the optic nerve to the brain's control center, also known as the body clock. This center instructs the pineal gland to release serotonin, melatonin, arginine vasopressin, and epithalamin. And the body clock communicates with the pineal gland. And that's why it is released at these times. What are these hormones? First, let's talk about melatonin, which plays a crucial role in regulating the sleep-wake cycle. Now, the gland releases more melatonin in darkness, which helps improve sleep quality and duration. Barbara O'Neill calls melatonin the fix and rejuvenate nighttime hormone because it repairs and revitalizes the brain and body during sleep. And how can we increase it? It's as simple as avoiding the blue light from the screen before sleep. We'll talk more about this later on. Next up is serotonin, which is known as the feel-good hormone and affects mood. What's interesting is that a lack of sleep can lead to mood swings due to disrupted serotonin levels. And if the children have a late night, what are they like in the morning? They're not happy chappies, and neither are the parents. <laughs> Another hormone she mentions is arginine vasopressin. This hormone helps alleviate pain and promotes deep sleep. And to up its numbers, O'Neill suggests high-intensity interval training to enhance its effects, as it helps eliminate bodily waste. The last one is epithalamin, which helps regulate the pineal gland and boosts learning capacity and slows aging. This one is particularly important as she highlights its importance for memory retention and keeping the brain active again and again. Now that we understand how the hormones released during sleep are great for the body, let's discuss the mind-blowing connection between early sleep and brain cleaning. While discussing the benefits of going to bed early, Barbara mentions the importance of hormones again. We discussed how arginine vasopressin works and how important it is for deep sleep as well. Deep sleep is important for you, as it plays an important role in many things. From compartmentalizing your emotions to forming long-term memories, this part of your sleep cycle is crucial if you want a healthier and more functioning brain. Barbara emphasized its importance and told us that we need to make a habit of sleeping earlier, as this will allow us to enter deep sleep earlier. She even says that you should exercise throughout the day as that will exhaust your mind and body, forcing you to sleep earlier. Well, if you're not used to it, you can just go like that. That's called the health bounce. And that's also why the hours before midnight are worth double. You see, when you sleep before midnight, the hormones work in such a way that it helps you forget the unimportant stuff that you've gone through throughout your day. And that helps you make space for newer memories or anything that you'd like to memorize. An arginine vasotocin is our natural painkiller. So if, if you have pain of any type and you go to bed early, your natural painkiller will kick in. Plus, there's an unbelievable impact of eight hours of sleep on memory and learning. So far, we've discussed how sleeping for eight hours can improve memory and cognitive ability, but did you know it's also been scientifically proven? Barbara once again gave the example of Dr. Matthew Walker, who has done extensive research in the field of the human mind. You see, Dr. Matthew conducted an experiment in which he divided 20 students into two groups. One group got eight hours of sleep every day, and the other got six. Both groups were taught in the same class with the same syllabus. And what were the results of this experiment? Well. 
The doctor found out that the students who had slept for eight hours a day had a better ability to retain information. Best study time happens early in the morning. Go to bed at 8 and get up at 4 a.m. In fact, those two hours from 4 to 6, the person can learn almost twice as much and retain twice as much as uh, 10 to midnight when the person's falling asleep. What's more interesting is the margin by which the eight-hour group was ahead. According to his numbers, it was around double that of the other group. According to Barbara, these results were due to the fact that these students had enough time to consolidate the information they received in the day during their deep sleep. By converting their short-term memory into long-term memory, these students showed how much of a difference just two hours can make. And if you are wondering how these students fell asleep on time, O'Neill has some top secret tips for falling asleep faster. When you don't get enough sleep, your body has an imbalance of hormones, all four of them. Not only do you wake up tired, but the lack of serotonin affects your mood as well. So how can you make sure you are getting eight hours of sleep? You can start by improving your air quality. By opening your window and making sure there's cross ventilation in your room, Barbara says you'll improve the quality of your sleep. Moving on to the next one, getting enough sun exposure. This one is particularly important, as like we mentioned earlier, sleep depends a lot on the circadian rhythm. According to Barbara, sunlight fixes your rhythm as it has a blue light, which tells your body that it's time to wake up. And that's not all. Sunlight also helps regulate the hormones from the pineal gland. Other tips she has for better sleep include avoiding caffeine and sugar in the evening, incorporating exercise into your routine, having a balanced diet, drinking enough water throughout the day, and managing stress and anxiety. And that's why exercise in the day is vital in maintenance of pain of any type in the body because it helps to release your natural painkiller every night. And that also puts you into a deep sleep. Another thing she told us to be wary about is the alarming truth about phones in the bedroom. We've all heard that phones aren't good for us at least once in our lives. But what's the science behind it? And how does it affect our sleep? Remember the blue light from the sun we mentioned a little while ago? According to Barbara, your phones emit the same light, but it has a different frequency. Now, when you are using your phone at night, these light rays trick your body into thinking that the sun is up outside and it's time to wake up. So basically these devices are disturbing your circadian rhythm. Sleep wasn't a problem before electric lights came along. People went to bed when the sun went down. And if they did anything, you couldn't do much under candlelight, is that right? But insomnia is a huge problem today. And there are a few reasons. She claims that there must be a time for winding down, especially an hour before sleep. That's also why she recommends having softer night lights in the room and reading a book if you can't fall asleep. And not just any book, something that isn't thrilling for you. She even suggests putting your phone in a different room when you want to sleep because phones are your worst enemy. Even if you are really tired, using your phone forces your brain to stay active, which can cause you to lose sleep. Plus, it's always tempting to check out those notifications. Lastly, she mentions unlocking the power of gratitude for incredible sleep quality. Now, I know what you are thinking. How is that related to sleep in any way? Well, Barbara claims that it is one of the most important steps. She gave the example of Ariana Huffington, who wrote in her book that if you can't sleep, you lie there and think of all the things to be thankful for. There's always something to be thankful for. Remember, happiness isn't dependent on things. Happiness is a choice. And that's why the Bible says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. So when you can't sleep, say, thank you, Father. Thank you that I can't sleep because now I can talk to you. There are two things that will stop sleep. Getting into the chat room. We all know the chat room. And also uh, looking at your phone. 80% of people in America sleep with their phone. The phone should not be in the bedroom. It should be out of the bedroom. Even if you're on call, put it in the hallway, you'll wake up. She even gave an example of a person who she was treating. She said that there was a man who was having trouble with sleep and she taught him the power of gratitude. And since then, the person hasn't had any trouble sleeping. The man in question asked her what to be thankful for, to which she replied, thank God you're in a comfortable bed and you're not in a concentration camp. Thank God that you're not in a work camp in Siberia. 
Thank God that you're not outside in a ditch trying to sleep and it's raining. Thank God you've got a comfortable bed. Thank God you've got a beautiful wife. Thank God you've got great kids. She says that even if you have absolutely nothing to be grateful for, you should thank the Lord for not being able to sleep so you can spend more time talking to him. When you incorporate gratitude into your life, you eliminate negative energy. This ultimately means that you are much more content and peaceful, and that will help you sleep better at night. That's all from this video, folks. What do you think about these remedies? Will you try them out as well? Let us know in the comments.